This morning's Bible lesson will be taken from Isaiah 60, verses, verse 1. Isaiah 60, verse 1. And it reads, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. This morning as we prepare ourselves for the prayer, we're going to turn to number 290. Number 290, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. We sing verse 1 and the chorus. Sing together. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior. There's light for a look at the Savior. And life more abundant and free turn your eyes upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace i invite you now to kneel as we have a morning prayer love and eternal god and our gracious Heavenly Father, the God who dwells in heaven above, yet in the hearts of men below, we come, dear Lord, in your presence, according to your command, that your Sabbath be a holy convocation unto the Lord. We've gathered in your name, because there is no other name on the heaven whereby we may be saved but the name of Jesus. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. And so we come to you, dear Father, because to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of life. This morning we come acknowledging that we have not been what you've always, what you've wanted us to be. We've sinned against you in word, thought, and deed. 
But we've come with the assurance that if we confess our sins, you are faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so this morning, like David, we ask that you would search our hearts and know our thoughts and see if there's anything in us that is unlike you, anything that is sinful, anything that stands between us and you, that we, dear Father, would be prepared to give it up, to confess it, and we know that you will take care of business for us. We ask in a special way this morning that you would come divinely close to every member here. We've come, Lord, for a refreshing. We've come, dear Lord, for a revival. We've come to hear a word from you. We ask this morning that you would let your Holy Spirit speak to our hearts. We know that whatever our circumstances, whatever our needs are, that you can supply all our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And so, Father, there are some among us who may be ill, and ailing and we come because we know that you are the great physician you are the balm in Gilead you are that God who comes with healing in your wings there are those who've come because we've wandered far away from home but now we want to say this morning we are coming home we recognize dear father that the signs of the times all indicate that your coming is near even at the door and so we want to make our calling and election sure. We pray this morning that those who've grown weary in well-doing, those who've grown cold along the way, that your Holy Spirit, dear Father, will prompt us, that you will stir us up and help us to recognize, dear Lord, that your coming is near and that you are coming for a prepared people. May we, dear Father, then bind up every opportunity to make it right with you. And to, like I said, make our calling and election sure. This morning, there are those who've come to the altar. They've come and you know that as their face is different, their needs are different. Some may have come, Lord, to give you thanks and praise for prayers answered. And then there are those who may have come to pour out their hearts in petition to you. But you know the needs of their hearts. You know the request, dear Father. And even as they come, They've come because they know that you are a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. And so, Father, as they lift their prayers to you, may their prayers be answered in accordance with your divine will. This morning, we also want to bring before you the one who has to break the bread of life, even Brother Anthony. We ask, Lord, that you would hide him behind the cross. We pray, dear Father, that you would touch his lips with that live coal from off the altar of heaven. May, as he speak, that we would not hear him, but hear you speaking to us. May your Holy Spirit take the words that have been prepared and translate them into an experience in our hearts, that we may go away from here stirred. And like the disciples asking the question, did not our hearts burn within us as we listened to your word? Even now, we ask that you would take care of this service and every aspect of this service. And whatever we fail to ask you for, Lord, fail not to grant. We thank you for those who are celebrating birthdays this month. We also want to thank you, Lord, for the safe delivery of our two sisters. And we thank you, Lord, that, you know, in the midst of it all, that you are still there and you are still looking out for us. Continue then to be with us, dear Father, and even as we rejoice because of that, help us, Lord, that our rejoicing would lead to a greater rejoicing the day that you should come and put in your appearance. May we, therefore, look up to you and be able to say, Lord, this is our God. We have waited for you and you have saved us. May we live here this day being assured of this one thing, that you who have begin, begun a good work in us will be able to complete it. May that be our experience that as you come, we would not be ashamed of you, but we would, dear Father, hail you as our Lord and Savior. For we ask, Lord, these mercies in no other name but the matchless and the precious name of Jesus Christ, his Son. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us thy peace. Good morning, church. We shall now worship the Lord with our gifts. The deacons shall now wait on us. For the beast of the forest is mine, and a cattle upon a thousand hill. If I were hungry, I would not have told you. For the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. The deacons shall now wait on us for tithes, offerings, and gifts. invite you to stand Bless our heads for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, and we thank you this morning that we can be found in your courts and that we can come boldly before your throne. We invite your presence here and we thank you for those who have given back their tithes and their offerings to you. We pray, dear Father, that you would continue to be with us as we go from day to day on our various places of work. Help us, dear Father, who will be light bearers as well, and that our minds, our thoughts will be focused on you, and those who we work with will see Jesus in us, and that the money, dear Father, that we have collected may be spent to glorify your name and to draw others closer to you. Through your Son Jesus, O oh Lord. Amen.
You may be seated. Music is key to our worship. And at this time, we're going to invite Sister Khadija Paris to come and give us an item of special music. Morning, church. Morning. Mm -hmm. I used to be so broken, lost, empty. A heart with no beat, a singer with no song to sing. So I know the feeling, the silence is deafening, but in your pain lies a blessing, a sweet song of victory. So keep walking and walking and walking, though it seems so far. No matter who you are, there is one thing that I know. Life, it can leave you so bitter, 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 bitter. But you must believe that it gets better, 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 better. It's all right, dry your eyes, send the prayer to the skies. I know that it's hard to fight, but you must believe that it gets better. Ooh, oh, oh. Listen to me, I know you're scared, your heart's bleeding. But what are you going to do now? I think it's time that you break free and keep walking and walking and walking though it seems so far. No, it doesn't really matter who you are. See, there's one thing that I know. Life it can leave you so bitter, 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 bitter. But you must believe that it gets better, 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 better. It's all right, dry your eyes, send the prayer to the sky. I know this hard to fight. But you must believe that it gets better, better, yeah, yeah. Almost out of here, see I was almost took. I wanted to tell for how I was the wrong. I cried out every night looking for a helping hand. That's when it happened, Jesus took me in. He held me close, he gave me love, refilled my heart, helped me grow better because he is love. It made me whole, he's available anytime. Try him out, he will change your life, see? Cause I know, yeah, yeah. life it can leave. You so bitter, 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 bitter. But you must believe that it gets better, 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 better. Life it can leave. You so bitter, 
bitter, bitter, bitter. But you must believe that it gets better. Thank you, Sister Khadija, for that item of special music. Life indeed will get better. We will have our children's corner now by Sister Nikayla Wiltshire. Good morning. Good morning, boys and girls. How was your week this week at school? Bad? This morning we were going to be talking about lies. Does anyone know why it's a lie? Can you tell me? A lie is something that is not true. Have you ever told a lie? What are you told? <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you a story about a little boy named Kevin. Crash went the glass from the window as it shattered onto the porch. Kevin stared at the broken window. He could hardly believe it. I didn't know that it could that the football would go this far. The throw had been a nice spiral too, but it went right back through the back porch. I guess I shouldn't have thrown it toward the house, he thought, as he ran up to see what happened. Looking at the mess, he thought, Mom and Dad are going to be mad at me when they get home. And I'll be probably, I will probably have to pay for the window. And I hardly have enough money to buy Mom's birthday present. Maybe, just maybe, I won't tell them I did it. If they ask, I'll have to tell them. But if they don't ask, then maybe, won't, maybe it won't be a lie. Then something popped into his mind. He remembered that his Sabbath school teacher said just the week before that in Acts, then something popped into his head. He remembered what his Sabbath school teacher said before. They had been reading in Acts about Ananias and Sapphira, Sapphira and what happened to them when they laid. Does anyone know who is Ananias and Sapphira? Who was that? Okay. <laughs> what did they do? They told a lie. And what was their punishment? They died. Boys and girls, their teacher had said, telling the truth is very important. There is no such thing as a little white lie in God's sight. Those who are not Christians think nothing about lying. Those who are not Christians think nothing about lying about something if it will be help to them. But the penalty that fell on Ananias and Sapphira shows that God shows what God thinks about lying. Yes, boys and girls, a lie is an awful thing, and often it is just the beginning of a path of sin. Also, remember that an acted lie is just as bad as a spoken lie. Someday, one of you may be tempted to hide something by keeping quiet. In God's sight. That is just another way of lying. When Satan tells you to keep quiet 
ask God to help you to tell the truth and not sin by keeping it quiet. He will help you to do what is right and pleasing to him. Just then, Kevin's parents drove into the driveway. As Kevin went around to the front, he asked God to help him tell the truth. Kevin's father immediately saw what happened and was, what, that somebody was bothering him. What's wrong, Kevin, he asked. I brought the back porch window with my football, and I'm crying. I'm sad. How did it happen, asked his father. I threw my new football toward the house, and it went a lot further than it had ever gone before. Then smash. I'll pay for the new window, Daddy. That's all right, Kevin, said his father, putting an arm around Kevin's shoulder. Accidents happen. I'm glad that you came and told me right away. As they talked more and more, Kevin told him how he almost didn't say anything about the window. But then he remembered what his Sabbath school teachers had said, that keeping quiet is another way of lying. Son, said father, I'm glad to see that you've learned its lesson today. It's so easy to lie. It is so easy to lie even without opening your mouth. I hope you've learned something else today too. When you're tempted to do something wrong, ask God for help to do what is right. Never think you can do it by yourself. So I'm going to leave you by saying that it's always good to tell the truth, even though you may think that you're going to get into trouble. Can anyone pray? To close, please. Brandy, you want to pray? Okay, Sheikh Wan, you're going to pray. You want to pray, Kate? Yes, please. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Okay, oh, Keon. Dear God, we thank you that we could be here today, another day that we could come to church and be able to learn more about you. And dear God, we want to ask you that what the children have heard today would um, stay in their minds, their father, throughout life, that everyone would they will be tempted would know that there will be temptations but that you will be able to help them to get through in Jesus name we pray amen, amen. Thank you, Sister Nikayla, for this Children's Corner today. Today to speak to us is Brother Anthony Boyce. However, before Anthony comes to speak to us, we will have another item of special music by Brother Mikael Taylor.
Good morning, church, once again. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Yes. Amen. Now, today is a special day in the life of the literature evangelist. And so, as I speak to you today, I will be encouraging you from the Word of God along those lines. Every day there are persons who are touched by one form or another, by violence, assaults, robberies, injustice, wickedness, and falsehood, and the list goes on. Our society is sick, suffering from the lack of moral values and spiritual guidance. Today more than ever, it is necessary to convey the knowledge of God. Today it is more than ever essential to lead others to a saving relationship with Christ Jesus. And as we lead others to a true relationship with Jesus Christ there is only one book that we can point them to and that is the Bible Amen. sometimes called the word of God or sacred scriptures let us pray eternal God and heavenly father as you use me Lord to voice forth your word I pray Lord that you will speak to me and you will speak through me and that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. The Word of God is light. I am sure that if you look to the ceiling, you will see a light right here over me. And this light is helping me to see as I speak to you from my notes. So too, the word of God is a light. A light that guides us in the straight path. And David, in Psalm 119 and verse 105, he declares, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I declare unto you this morning that the Bible is the light of God's word and that it is trustworthy. I boldly declare to you that the Bible is trustworthy not because I say so or Brother Lionel might say so but it's trustworthy because the Bible speaks for itself. In other words, the Bible and the Bible only. Also in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, uh, the word of the Lord declares all scripture, not some scripture, not the Old Testament and not the New Testament, but all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for the instruction in righteousness. I further declare to you from the word of God in 2 Peter 1 and verse 21 it says for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of God but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. I have yet one more for you. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 12 and 13 it says now we have received not of the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. My brothers and sisters, I further declare to you that the Bible is the light of God 
and it is trustworthy. And because the Bible has been tested and tried in many trying circumstances, and the word of God always come out on top. Even in reference to things that are of a science nature, the Bible can give us the answer. For example, concerning the shape of the earth. In Isaiah 40 and verse 22, the Bible says, It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. <laughs> this tells us that the earth is not flat. It tells us that the earth is not a square, but he sitteth on the circle of the earth. The Bible is the light of God for all his children. The light of God for all his children. The word of God show us how we ought to live. But not just live, my friends, because anybody, any person, any of us in here can live. But what counts? is the quality life, a life of quality. And we can only live a life of quality if we have a personal relationship with the man Christ Jesus. We can only live a life that is worthwhile when we have that touch of the Holy Spirit. For out there in the world, there is nothing to offer. There is nothing. All of there is sadness and gloom and, and doom. But when you come to Christ and you trust his word and you read his word, his word guide you into the straight path. For it says a life that is surrendered to God, guided by the Holy Spirit, and is in harmony one with another. That harmony, one with another, is very important. Because if we are going to serve God, and if we are going to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us, we also must be in harmony, one with the other. There was a young man named Robert, who showed no interest in the things of God. He was given to a life of rock music, a life of fun and he always wore black but one night as he was meditating God touched his heart and this man had a desire a desire to read the Bible but he had one concern and his concern was that there was no Bible in the house. However, the Spirit led this young man to just walk through the house and to enter the living room. And to his surprise, he saw a book on the floor. And when he picked it up, it was the Bible. Note carefully, there was no book, no Bible in the house, but this man was touched by the Lord and he had a desire to read and the Spirit just led him down to the living room and he found the Bible. But what Robert did not know, that his mother was walking down the street and she saw this book and she picked it up and she brought it home. And that was the book. That was the Bible. And Robert was excited to, to read the word of God. And so Robert took the book and he began to read. He began to study. And even as the spirit of the Lord worked with him, we are told, that he never was the same again. 
The word of God changes lives. The word of God can bring you from a very low state to a high state, to a high position in Christ Jesus because you trust him and you believe his word. When God is ready to speak to anyone through his word, he will provide the means whereby that individual or individuals will hear the word of God. When you see that you have that desire, Robert had a desire to read the Bible and the Lord led him down through the house to the living room where he saw the Bible. My friends, if you have the desire, a sincere desire to know the word of God and to read the word of God, God will provide that means. He will send someone to you with a Bible, with a track, with a book, something that you can read and further gain knowledge to the saving of your soul. The word of God changes lives and it changes hearts. From hearts of stone to hearts of flesh. And as Robert began to read and to study the Bible, we are told that from that morning he was a changed man. Eventually, he gave his life to Christ. My friends, the reading and studying of the Bible or the word of God can do the same for you. I encourage you this morning that if you have not started yet to read the Bible, today is the time to start. And if you are already reading and studying, I encourage you not to give up, but to continue. Psalm 18 and verse 28 says, for thou will light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. When we come to God, there is no darkness, but all is light. And note what I'm saying here, church. I'm not saying that when you come to God that everything will be easy. I'm not saying that at, at all. But what I'm saying is that when you come to God, you have come out of a life of darkness to a life of light, Amen. the light of God. For John chapter 1 tells us that the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. This is saying to us that Jesus, as the light of the world, his light is able to dispel every form of darkness. The word of God is a light that lights up the heart. It expresses God's will for man. Theologians are documented in it. Sincere people have found peace with God. Educated people are mentioned in this holy book among the most important. Therefore, if we are the children of God, we must devote our time to study and to meditate therein. The author of this book is Jesus. And so we must also commune with him. And he through his Holy Spirit will enlighten our thoughts even as we study his word. In the year 2014, Bible societies distributed 428.2 million writings in the world. 
including Conflict Bibles, which is the best-selling book in the world. They also distributed pamphlets and traps, and they were all given to persons who I believe as they read and study that they were led to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's that God commanded us to share that light. Church members must be the first responders in sharing the light of God. Those of us here at Cave Hill, those of us within the hearing of my voice, we are encouraged this morning. We are encouraged to be the first responders to share the word of God. We have a locale from Daytree Hill down to Coconut Hall. And we should be the first up there to share the word of God with our friends, with our neighbors, with our relatives, and even with our enemies. Just to share something with you, I often visit, take some walks through Coconut Hall, and when I'm not walking through, sometimes I stop and I communicate with some persons over there. And just recently I was asked a question concerning the resurrection, concerning the, the state of the dead. And at one stage I would be a bit hesitant because I don't want to give persons wrong information. But I am thankful to God and I want you to praise God with me. Do not see me, praise God. But on this occasion, I felt confident and I sat down and I talked with that individual explaining to them what a concern and what they were asking. I say this to say that there are persons out there with questions. There are persons out there who are fighting for answers. They are looking for answers. They are seeing so many things happening in the world and around them. And they want to know. I encourage you, church, to talk with someone. Share with them your experience. You can even take a book to them, any of any white books. And you can encourage them to read it. And if they have any questions, they can easily get back to you. And you can sit down with them and you can discuss what they need to know. This is a time when persons in the world need the word of God more than ever. If those of us in the church, we need the word of God, yes. But we can imagine those who are out there, they need to know. They need to know. And our task is to go and make disciples, to teach and to preach, and to show them the way. Entering the homes of your neighbors to sell or to give away literature and in humility to teach them the truth, you will be accompanied by the light of heaven which will abide in these homes. So what I have just said to you, it is right here, the servant of the Lord encourages us to go and the light of heaven will attend us as we sit and we teach 
as we explain to those persons who want to know. There's also a quote here from Gospel Workers, page 353, paragraph 2. It says, Let the workers go from house to house, opening the Bible to the people, circulating the publications, and telling them of the light that has blessed their own souls. When you go to witness to someone, you can share with them your own experience. I'm sure that all of us here today, we have at least one experience that we can share with someone to let them know how the God of heaven, the Savior of the world, the Redeemer of the world, let them know how he has touched our own lives and how he has changed us from going down a road of destruction to a path of righteousness. Let literature be distributed judiciously on the bus, on the trains, in the streets, on the big ships, and through the mail. Let every believer scatter traps and leaflets and books containing the message for this time. Just a yeah, week before last, I was by Sister Levine and I was watching 3 ABM and there was a program that was coming over at the time called GLOW Go Light Our World GLOW and the way the way their personality was interviewing this person the president of GLOW and he was explaining to him about the number of traps that they give out to persons. They just walk with them in their pocket and as they meet people in the bus, on the street, wherever, they just give them a trap. The culporter or literature evangelist or powerful instrument in the hands of God to bring light and to dispel the darkness in the hearts of people. Within our country and within our cities, there are people who cannot be evangelized in any other way. But by true this method. So there are persons that you and I may not be able to reach, but we can reach them by giving them a truck, by giving them a magazine. And in that case, the Holy Spirit will work through them, even as they study and read. In this world of sin, many are discouraged and depressed, long for the light of God through his word. The Bible Okay, just give me a minute. <laughs> In this world of sin, many are discouraged and dispel long for the light of God through his word. The Bible will shine on them. Let me share with you another story. There was this woman, and she was very desperate. You know, sometimes if you mind the things that are happening around you, you know, they can get you very desperate if you're not aware and you don't have a knowledge of God. You know, and sometimes, although you may have a knowledge of God, sometimes you still wonder, but then the Holy Spirit click 
and you come to yourself and you think. He may even send you to the Bible to read a passage or a promise. And I'm saying this to say, what about those who do not know the Savior? Because those who do not know the Savior will go to any means and sometimes very desperate need, uh, needs. And this woman, she was desperate to the point where she wanted to commit suicide. She also wanted to kill her two children, her two young children. It says she had in her hand the pills that she would take. But God is always good. Amen? It said, but at that moment, someone knocked at the door. At first, she did not want to answer the call. But the person did not give up. The person keep on knocking. And then she decided to open the door. And as she opened the door, she was greeted with some good words and a smiling face. Someone who yeah. Someone who was bringing to her the light of God's word. And that individual not only had the light of God's word in her hand or his hand, but the word was also in the heart of that individual. And even as they greet this desperate woman, she saw a change. She saw something that she did not have. And in response to the caller, or the person who was knocking at her door, she changed her mind. And I believe that as the person talked with her and would have given her something to read, I believe that there was a change. I am saying to you, church, that God is never late. He is always on time. Because God came through for that woman just in time even as the pills were in her hand just to be taken he came through at the right time my friends church I say to you first again already that it will not be easy but let us hold on let us stick close to the master for we have come too far now to turn back for Jesus is even at the door Invitation to all. The circulation of our literature is one very important means of placing before men and women the light that the Lord has committed to his church to be given to the world. All, mem all the members who shared the literature and the workers who work as literature evangelists make the work of God by preaching to the souls who do not know the truth. They proclaim the message of warning and preparing the people for the return of the Lord. Church, do you believe that the Lord is coming again? Do you believe that he will soon come? We do not know when. But all the signs are pointing in that direction that he is coming is even at the door. Church, let us bind up every opportunity while we have time. Let us seek the lost. Let us seek the depressed. Let us seek those who are discouraged and seek to encourage them and to lead them to a life of salvation in Christ Jesus. Now is the time 
We must strengthen the work of the publications. Do you want to commit to God to share the light of truth through publications to the people who do not know about the Savior? To those who accept, the Lord will train them to cooperate with Him. They will receive talent, courage, perseverance, faith, and a touch to perform this task. The Lord asks, Who shall I send and who will go for us? You want to answer, Here am I, send me. Jesus is calling. What is your answer? Brother Sobers. Good afternoon, church. It is my duty as the publishing coordinator for the church to support Brother Anthony, who is now our newest um, literary evangelist here at Kiefil. I am very happy that he has decided to become one of the many literary um, evangelists that we, we need to carry forward this work. Uh, last week we had an institution at Oldbury and um, we had a very a good training session. Um, I was not uh, able to attend all of it because um, at one point I was, well, let us say I would be yelling. But during that time we did some work at Amazing Grace in the afternoon session. And um, we had another person from this church, the membership is here, signed up as a, uh, a literary evangelist. That is Sister um, Lucas. Um, she's sat in the back there um, with, in Gary's class. Um, she signed up as well. And so we are having people signing on. And um, I am happy to see that because as Anthony has been seen, it's a big work, and we have to prepare to, to do the work. And what I want to, um, I just want to, to use a, four, a few quotations from the book called Porter Ministry in order to support our, um, <clears throat> the work. Now, the first quotation says that we are responsible for this work. All of us are responsible for this work. Now, there are times that people tell us, uh, and uh, people have been telling me, that they are not um, supposed to uh, do this type of work. But I want to say to us, as long as we become Christians, your task is to spread the gospel. Now, there are many ways in which it can be, it can be spread. But, um, as a literary evangelist or a porter, it is a, a little easier because um, some people say that well, we can't talk, we can't do this, but you can spread the word of God through tracts, through magazines and so forth, as Brother Anthony has said. You can distribute these, and Sister White has said that they sh must be um, distributed uh, like the, the leaves on, the, on, on, on a tree. They must be distributed. And let me say the, the work is just as, uh, as people want to say sometimes, I just want to say this. One time um, somebody said to me, from the job that you were doing to a car you, 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 you got to be joking. You know, they looked at it as something, a step down. But let me tell you, it is important, just as important as the work of a minister. And sometimes I want to say it is more important because the minister talks to a, a congregation like this. But your work, you do not know where it will go. It will enter into homes that the minister can't go into. You, when, you, when you distribute literature, it finds its way into lots of places that the minister 
would not be able to go. So you should get involved. It is easy. Uh, all you have to do is, under God's guidance, spread the, the, the magazines, the books. And I want to say that there are three categories, uh, as Carl Porter the, the part-time, the full-time, and the occasional. If you don't want to be full-time, you can be part-time. And if you don't want to do that, you can be occasional. Occasional means that you, you, you take the opportunity wherever you can to distribute tracks magazines and so forth and I want to say to you that you everybody is responsible for spreading the gospel and I want to read a quotation here from Sister White called Porter Ministry it says we are in the shaking time and a lot of us will agree with that and uh, the time when when everything that can be shaken will be shaken. We wonder why so many people are dropping out of church. So many people are, are, are not interested because um, we are in the shaking time. So the Lord will not excuse, and I want you to listen to this very carefully, the Lord will not excuse those who know the truth if they do not in the word and deed obey his commands. If we make no effort to win souls to Christ, we shall be held responsible for the work we might have done but did not do because of our spiritual laziness so this is a very serious quotation the work that you should not that you should have done you're going to be held responsible for if you um play lazy so to speak so um, i'm admonishing you at this time to get up and do some work now another um, <coughs> quotation i'd like to to read before we finish um, and it goes like this the Carl Porter's reward when the redeemed stand before God and we hope to be among the redeemed precious souls will respond to their name who are there because of the faithful patient effort put forth in their behalf there are lots of people whose name will be called because of the patient effort that you have put forward and uh, on their behalf and the entreaties and earnest persuasions to flee the stronghold of Satan thus those who in this world have been laborers together with God will receive their, their reward and it further states, what will be the gratitude of souls that will meet us in the heavenly courts as they understand the sympathetic, loving interest which has been taken in their salvation? All praise, honor, and glory will be given to God and to the Lamb for our redemption. But it will not detract from the glory of our God to express gratitude to the instrumentality he has employed in the salvation of souls ready to perish. The redeemed will meet and recognize those whose attention they have directed to the uplifting Savior. What blessed converse they will have with these souls. I was a sinner. It will be said without God and without hope in the world and you came to me and drew my attention to the precious Savior as my only hope. What rejoicing there will be as these, re as these, redeemed, what, as these redeemed ones meet and greet those who have, ha <clears throat> who have had a burden in their behalf. In other words, all it is saying is that when the redeemed meet in heaven, there will be souls who you recognize and who I recognize and they will recognize each other and they will say it is because of you that I am here and um, so this gives us motivation and commitment to, to get in there and to help because these people will be, re will be seeing you and recognizing you as the person who have spoken to them and caused them to accept Jesus Christ and 
like I said, they will recognize you. So I am saying to us that we must get in, involved in the work in some area, in some area, and we can do this daily as we go about, part-time, full-time, or occasional. Now, I am making a, <clears throat> a call for those people who want to get involved in the little evangelist work. We are now getting ready to do some work with the youth in the Pike Corner area. We need people to go into the field. We need people to give out magazines. We need people to give out tracts. We need people to talk to those people out there. This is evangelistic work of the highest order. And we are imploring and asking us to get involved, get involved. Because if you do not, when the role is called up there, you are going to be held responsible for the work that you ought to do. So I have a number of forms that can be used to sign you up, so to speak. The forms just simply say that you want to become part of the ev evangelistic work. And um, you, you just sign it for me. You give your name, your address, your telephone, your email address if you have, and your church. And you can get involved as a, liter uh, as a literary evangelist. So I want you to consider this. You're not too young, you're not too, young, uh, too old, but you must get involved in the outreach program of your church and also with those who you meet around. And so as we say the closing hymn number 359 number 359 is um, the, say number 359 if there's anyone who would want to get involved in this work they can as we sing the song and as we get ready to close um, I'll be doing a closing prayer you can you can um, and at the end of when we are going out the offering for the the um, education the education offering will be collected um, hark the herald angels sing no hark the voice of Jesus calling I'm thinking about when we get to heaven see Hark the voice of Jesus calling. Put it up on the screen. Let us stand, please. I don't have the hymn book before me. Jesus calling, who will go and work today? Fields are white, the harvest waiting, who will bear the sheaves away? Loud and loud, the master calleth, rich reward, the offers free. Who will answer gladly, saying, Lord send me If you cannot cross the ocean at the heathen lands explore You can find the heathen nearer You can help them at your door If you cannot speak like angels If you not preach like Paul. You can tell the love of Jesus. You can say he died for all. If you cannot be the watchman, sat in high on Zion's wall, pointing out the path to heaven, offering life and peace to all with your prayers and with your bounties you can do whatever demands you can be like faithful Aaron holding up the 
prophet's hands For the souls of men are dying And the master calls for you Let none hear you idly saying There is nothing I can do Gladly take the task he gives you Let his work your pleasure be Answer quickly when he calleth Am I, O Lord, send me As we prepare to close in prayer, I want to just say to you that the visitation group that we have, we have decided to meet on the first Wednesday afternoon of every month. You know, we go out in the field on Wednesday afternoons, but we have decided to make the first afternoon in each month a day of prayer so we'll be coming to the church at six o'clock in the afternoon instead of going out in the in, in to visit we'll be coming to the church six in the afternoon every first Wednesday in the month so this Wednesday we'll be coming that's an hour before the the our normal church evening starts and we are inviting all members of our church who want to share. We'll be praying for effort, we'll be praying for various things, um, uh, various requests, and so we'll be, we'll be coming at six o'clock Wednesday afternoon for the first. So we're inviting you to come along, and then you can go straight into your Wednesday night service or whatever. And let us bow our heads for prayer. Our kind of most loving Father, we are indeed grateful to you for your love. We are grateful, we are grateful to you for what you have done for us as you in the past. But Father, we know that we have a task that lies ahead. We know that we are coming to the close of our history. We need to spread the word however we can. Uh, some people are preachers, some are, uh, uh, operate in various spheres. But we know that we need to do it. So, Father, whatever is our calling, we ask that you would give us a necessary commitment and a necessary motivation to do thy will. And, Father, we pray that as we go from here today, we may have this foremost in our minds. We want to inherit the kingdom that you have gone to prepare, to prepare for us, but we do not want to be selfish. We want to work for those who we we work with those who we rub shoulders with our friends we want to let them know of the gospel we want to let them know of the good news that they can be saved from this sin sick world so father we ask you that we will do everything that we can to further this gospel and father we pray now especially for those who have already decided to be literary evangelists and we pray for those who will decide and we pray for all of those who are spreading the gospel in other other areas so father we, we do our bit to further your kingdom so that when you should come that all of us may be among those called to go and inherit the kingdom that you have gone to prepare and the homes that you have gone to prepare prepare for us so father we ask you now that you would bless us you would continue to let your holy spirit be with us to guide and direct our footsteps as we go about from day to day and we pray that we may have the, that opportunity to to be a witness for you so that when you should come we will be able to meet all um, or some of those people there who will always say to us who will say to us and recognize us as the person who have directed them to you so father bless us continue to bless us let your holy spirit lead in jesus name i ask for his sake amen Shalom, my 
friends, Shalom, my friends, Shalom, Shalom. May peace be with you, God's peace be with you, Shalom, Shalom. May blessings attend you, angels defend. Shalom, shalom. God's mercies befriend you unto the end. Shalom, shalom. Till we meet again, till we meet again. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.